So our second module in our final phase, hard choices, is gonna be about team versus private. Stay or go, go or stay, whatever is gonna be the vector you're going in. This is not an easy thing to talk about. Personally, I have a lot of experience going from the private sector to the team sector to the private sector. Uh, depending on what phase you are in your career, this is a easier, difficult conversation. So we're going to talk about all that. We're going to talk about the, the good, the bad, and we're really going to hopefully strategize when's the best opportunity to think about going from one direction to the other and helping yourself have the best possible career from a compensation standpoint, as well as from a job satisfaction standpoint. So let's dive into this module. So for the folks that don't know my career trajectory, I started off working in the high school sector, and then I moved into a private sector at a sports performance facility called Velocity Sports. Then I started to intern in the college, or intern at Harvard, intern at Georgia Tech, graduate assistant at Springfield College, interned at Ole Miss, got my first job at Georgia Tech, worked at USC, head strength coach at Army West Point, and then I left. And I became a owner, head coach, co-founder of a gym in Los Angeles called Allegiant. And I've been doing that ever since. So my career now has been tied into pretty much two thirds the team sector and one third the private sector. And depending on what your aspirations are or what you really want from your career, you can either look at that as really good or a mistake. Whatever your perception of that really comes down to where you're at professionally. And I think that's the central theme of what I wanna go into in this that I have no buyer's remorse off of the path and trajectory I did for in the team setting. Like I climbed, climbed, climbed. I was able to establish myself. I was part of two staffs that I got fired. First job at Georgia Tech, we got fired after our first year. We were able to get retained. Uh, my second job at USC, I got let go at the end and I wasn't retained. And I was able to get a head strength coach job about that. So the ebbs and flows of the team sector, you know, those were all really interesting and fun and I think transformative experiences. And I think it set me up for being in the private sector. And when I left the team sector, I think the thing that I had to look at was what are my future options here? You know, what is going to be the next step? Looking around the room, what coaches do I have an alliance with? What, co what coaches do I have some sort of cohesion with that if I need to, I can leverage them to help me get a job down the road. I hated that feeling though of being subservient to another coach that either I thought was more competent or skilled than. And it might feel like that comes off as arrogant. It might feel like that comes off as you don't really understand the dynamics. But the other notion is if you don't like that, that hierarchy that you are the product of some coach liking you or not liking you, change course. And that's what I did. I made a decision to take control of my career. And I said, instead of hoping that a coach likes me enough to hire me, I'm going to make the decision that's in the best interest for me and my family to establish control of, of hopefully what I would be compensated. And my thought is if I'm good as I'm saying I am, or good as I think I am, Going into the private sector should prove that I should make a good, considerable amount of money. Okay, well, here's the reality. No one in the real world outside of strength conditioning really cares or knows what you do. And I think that was the part that was most alarming and most humbling for me. That I was one of 100 and 130 people in the world as a Division One strength conditioning coach for football. There's only 130 of us in the world, maybe more now because they've added some FCS programs, but there was only 130 of us at the time. My name's featured on USA Today, making six figures. I get a house featured on national TV every single week. I have a premier job. And I left because I didn't love the lack of control I had. I didn't know if I was going to get fired or promoted on any given day. I didn't know if we were going to get fired, what would be my opportunities from there? Do I have to cut whatever it is I'm compensated by half? Am I scrambling to hopefully find a job to make comparable salary? Because you're, 
your cost of living goes up with each phase. The more you make, the more the harder it is to go back down to a less compensation. And I didn't love that feeling of not knowing what the future of my financial capability was, not based off of my merit or my skill, but whatever someone actually thought was worthy and if they liked me or not. But in the private sector, the, the concept that that should transfer automatically is a fool's errand. It was a bit of overconfidence and a bit of potentially lack of humility that I would thought it would just parlay. That I thought I did my legwork. I thought I did the foundation, being an intern, getting my master's degrees, going through all the certification and courses, building up a rapport and some sort of pedigree in my profession. But it's really siloed off and you don't really understand that. A lot of strength conditioning coaches now are making an online presence, and I think it's great. I think it's fantastic because it gives you options, and it makes that transition. If you're going to open up a gym, a brick-and-mortar space, you're going to have a lot of overhead, a lot of operating budget, and you're going to have a lot of responsibility. And the truth is, if you love the coach, you should read the E-Myth, you should read Jim Lon Secrets, you should read these books that really set you up for success because chances are when you become a business owner, you stop becoming a coach, that you have less actual opportunity to coach and program and do the things that you're really interested in than you thought you would. And you become more of a business owner. You're making sure the lights are kept on, you're making sure the P&Ls are done, you're making sure payroll's done, you're making sure all these things are operating smoothly so you can have the best business run possible. You're a business owner now, you're a manager. And if that's something that you're excited about, if you're looking to take the next proverbial step in your life, I really honestly think that maybe you should consider leaving the team sector. But if you're not, like I love coaching, I love programming, I love the interaction with athletes, you should really consider staying and potentially thinking about that. But it goes into the really important part of this, that when I have this conversation with coaches about should I leave the team sector and go into the private sector, it really comes down to are you running from something or are you running towards something? That I hate my job, I hate my role, I hate everything about it, I'm underpaid, I'm overworked, you might be running from something into something else that you're not going to change. Being a small business owner, being an independent contractor, whatever it is, the hustle, the grind will always be the same. That the differentiating quality between good and bad in most things is going to be about effort and consistency of that effort over a longer period of time. Talent and skill matter, but the really bottom line thing for strength conditioning universally is hard work and consistency over a long period of time. So if you're not willing to put the work in, or you're tired of putting the work in, you probably should consider maybe not necessarily being a strength coach in the team sector or the private sector because it's not going to change. That The idea that I can go into one avenue or next. And the other part, which is really hard, is, and you should get from this e-myth book, of we're the worker, we're the entrepreneur, or the manager. And you realize what you already have a skill in or an interest in, you typically gravitate to when things are going hard or not going well. So if my business is failing, if my career is failing, I'm going to double down on what I can control or what I already know, which would be programming and coaching. Chances are that's not the rate limiting step. My ability to keep myself in a college strength conditioning job would be predicated not off my skill or knowledge or my ability, but my soft skills or my people skills, my ability to sell who I am, my ability to convince a strength a football coach or a basketball coach that I'm quality and of merit that I need to sell myself. I need to sell who I am and what I do. Not only just what the processes of which I do, but the outcome of what I can do, which is the same premise in sales and, and working in the private sector. Can I sell you on the idea that all these other entities pale in comparison to the level and skill and knowledge that I can do? Not only that, that I can do it in a compelling and interesting and really, cap really amazing way. Because the really, the really the big difference in the team and the private sector is not what you do or the programming or the, the setup. It really comes down to the monotony and the, the never change of seasons. The stuff we talked about with finding, bringing value and finding purpose and leveraging change of seasons, that doesn't really happen in the private sector. It's the same thing every single day. It is fit two weeks of the same people, the same gym, the same monotony. And that's, that's good sometimes if you want to make 
substantial changes. You're looking at it from the chop wood, carry water, the, the idea of I want to see the power of my interventions. You will love the private sector. If you really struggle with that, I need change, I need variance, I need to have something to look forward to every single three, four months, then maybe you're not a great fit. But it's the same truth. Can you work hard over a long period of time? And can you sell yourself? And if you don't really have an inventory of what your skill sets are and what you're good or bad at, you're probably going to struggle regardless. So for, work on that. So the module tasks here, find whether you're running from something or running towards something. Do I hate my job and I want to change? Do I want to go towards something where I think I can bring more value? The other part is do an inventory of what is your strengths. Are you a coach? Are you a manager? Are you an entrepreneur? Coach is strength and conditioning coach, what you're doing right now in the team sector. A manager is someone that can manage and operate other people. So if you're a head strength coach and you have five to six people working underneath you and you're orchestrating them and be successful every single day, you are a manager. Can you parlay that into a private business? And the final one is an entrepreneur. Can you sell your program? You're selling it to athletes, you're selling it to coaches, but can you sell it to someone else to give you money? Because eventually it's gonna hit this big milestone moment of can I have your credit card? And taking that payment is a weird and surreal feeling. But if you're ready and you're good, it should work out just fine.